Hello. Welcome, right on time at 740, perfect. Perfect. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, today, this time for our presentation, we have Deakin University. Um, we have current second year student, Bree Nickel, chatting all about the Deakin Med School and her experience. So um, I will let you take it away. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat uh, and we'll get to them. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so hi everyone. Yeah, my name's Bree. I'm a second year medical student here at Deakin. Um, I guess to start off, maybe why I chose Deakin. Um, so like probably many of you, um, I unfortunately did not get into any medical schools in Canada, so I decided to look elsewhere. I had visited Australia before uh, one of my friends had moved down um, and I had come and visited her and I was like, wow, Australia, she's pretty nice. Um, so I started looking for some schools, connected with Oztrek. I ended up applying to six schools and then I got interviewed for five of them and then I got accepted to all five. So I had to pick. Um, in terms of Deakin, why I chose Deakin, there was a few reasons. Um, one of them, I really liked that it was a bit of a smaller cohort. It's only about 140 to 150 students, depending on the year. So I really liked that we were kind of more focused on we weren't just a number we were an actual person um, and then if you do get choose Deakin or decide to come in any way um, they definitely like value their students and they really want to get to know us each and I just like to talk with us like we're their peers um, and I really liked that so there wasn't really a, a imbalance where you know our lecturers think that they're you know high and mighty and up top um, they really see us as their equals and they learn from us and we learn from them and I really liked that vibe um, additionally, I liked how the program was set up. I liked that we're kind of in four blocks continuously through the year. So you can really get that good integration of public health medicine with ethics, law and professionalism, um, and then along with the med specific blocks that you're doing. Um, in first year, you don't maybe notice it as much, but in second year, you really understand kind of the foundations of things and why things work the way they do and you actually are starting to pull a lot more of those connections together um so in your first year it's a bit hard to see it at, uh in the beginning but by your second year where i am now i'm like oh yeah because of this and that's really helpful um i just also liked the community vibe that deacon had so for me and likely many of you you're will be moving to a place that you don't have any family or friends necessarily so i just really liked that your people, your staff really could be your family um, and they're your friends and they're people that you can lean on. Um, I know like obviously this year was so crazy and there was definitely people that I reached out to because I was like, oh my gosh, I I don't have anyone. I don't know what to do. Um, and everyone's just so helpful um, and willing to be there for you. So I really, really loved the family vibe. Um, in terms of like my cohort, my cohort, even though we were separated for a year, we are all still such good friends. Um, we just like, we love each other. We love seeing each other um, any chance we can get. And that's what I really loved about specifically like how Deacon kind of had their program um, set up was just like, not comp no competition. You know, we all want to see each other succeed. We all want to lift each other up like we're always like oh we're surviving not thriving like we're killing this we're gonna do fine um so i really liked that aspect and deacon really stresses that like life work balance so you're a med student but you're also a human being and they want you to do that and pursue those options as well which i really really appreciated because i think sometimes as students we need that kind of kick in the pants um i see that we have a question is that right yeah so, my undergrad degree <laughs> Folks, I am a bit of a weird student. So my undergrad is actually in environmental science. Um, I originally wanted to do environmental consulting work. And so that obviously requires, um, for me, I was living in Alberta. So that was a lot of like tail spans remediation um, and cleaning up old oil sites. Uh, in my third year of university, I took a course about uh, health and the environment. And I instantly was like, oh my goodness, this is what I need to be doing. I loved the environment, but I really loved like the biology of the environment and more the living. Um, and I felt like people would help the environment if they felt like it affected them. So I kind of took a bit of a detour. I wrote my MCAT three times. Uh, I did fine. I did good. Uh, just not good enough for Canada, apparently. Um, and then so I actually worked as a consultant for a bit, which I really enjoyed. Um, I worked at a spin studio for a bit. Also loved that. 
Um, and then I ended up here. So I have a bit of a weird way getting here, but it was definitely fun. And I'm, I'm happy to have done what I've done. And I love that we sort of say you had a little bit of a roundabout way of, of getting here, but you're definitely not the only one because um, one of the great things about our program is not having prerequisites. So we've got students from all sorts of academic backgrounds, all sorts of professional backgrounds, which is amazing um and everyone really brings sort of something from that so you know Bree has this absolutely phenomenal understanding of how the environment does impact our health but then you know others have we've had lawyers in the program we've had engineers we've had people that have done clinical backgrounds um our ducks of medicine our highest scoring student a few years back was a concert cellist before they came to us so um yeah really diverse backgrounds which is amazing and i think one of those things that make deacon that little bit of a different medical school as well oh looks like sarah's been on top of the question about the applications fantastic thank you it is a little bit of a different process this year so um Thank you for bearing with us while we figured out all the details around that. So, yeah, if you um, have any questions, if you're not in contact with Amanda already from Oztrek, um, obviously we work directly with Deacon, so we'll get all the information um, as soon as they have it, and we'll let all of our students that either have applications open or have kind of interested in opening applications, let them all know all the deadlines and everything when they come up. And Amanda and Charlene know so much about our program and if they don't know it they're usually like sending me an email saying hey can you help um so yeah we've got a great relationship with the crew at Oztrek which is fantastic for sort of getting all that information out to everyone which is awesome mm -hmm. we have another question do you know what you're thinking of specializing in Brie and are you planning to return to Canada or stay in Australia okay it's a million dollar question the answer is I still don't know what I want to specialize in. Um, I think in your, I think you should go in with a really open mind because I honestly thought I was going to love respiratory because it's very tied with the environment and I hated it. So that really shows you that you really got to like see it, try it, be open to it. Um, I am pretty sure I don't want surgery uh, just because I don't know if you can tell, I probably like to talk a little too much. Um, so I think surgery just wouldn't be a good match for my personality. Um, in terms of coming to Canada, going back to Canada, I will for sure stay here for my internship. I really like it here. I, at this stage, don't really want to leave. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like, you know, in three years down the road. Uh, if you ask my parents, though, I am only staying for the, the five years and then I'm, then I'm gone. I'm back home. So I'm trying to stay really open um because I think you have to and I think this last year has really taught us that too like I mean I had a plan coming into this it did not go to plan which is you know fine in itself um but yeah just be really open um to those things um and then I see so getting my CV so uh in terms of my CV I've been doing a lot of uh, student run societies. So I'm part of Medusa. I was doing some peer mentoring. I'm also in a med mentors um, group that's just gone uh, like nationwide, which has been really cool. Um, so I'm kind of building, yeah, I know, so exciting. Um, kind of building my CV in that regard. I know some students do work and continue to work and that has been a great thing for them. Um, I would hoped to get more shadowing in. Unfortunately, we haven't had a lot of exposure just given um, COVID and stuff. And even for this year, we only get one clinical placement so far. Uh, that'll be in a GP clinic, which everyone who's done it has said it's amazing and we're so excited. Uh, but my perspective is like, I have my entire life to be exposed to a hospital and a clinical environment. And so as much as I want to be doing that and it's so fun and it makes you feel like you're doctoring and you're doing the thing, we, we have our entire lives to do this. So, you know, why not hold back a little bit, enjoy the ride, enjoy that you get to be with friends and make new friends and surf and walk on the beach and whatever it is that gives you joy. Um, Cause we will all get to that point in life where we're only gonna be in a hospital or we're only gonna be in a clinic or, and we're gonna wish for the days that we were you know, sitting, 
studying at my desk or something. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think the other thing with that is you're going to be based in our clinical schools in years three and four of your degree. So you do have basically a hundred percent clinical exposure in those years. Um, and, you know, in the, before COVID um, we did have a lot more clinical opportunities before uh, sorry, in your first two years. Um, and we are hoping to get back to that. It's just, they're still a little bit limited at the moment while we have restrictions around our hospitals and things. So mm -hmm. be coming back. Um, I might just jump in with the question about the, how difficult is it to get an internship in Australia? Um, but yes, it can be difficult to get a match as an international student. Um, as an international student, you, or an international graduate, you wouldn't be guaranteed an intern place. Um, different states have different policies around that. Um, in Victoria, our international students, our international medical students are quite well placed because um, they are considered in one of the earlier match rounds. So it goes domestic students that were taught in Victoria international students that were taught in Victoria and then everyone else. Um, whereas some other states, it's um, all of the domestic students, no matter where they studied from, and then international students are considered last. Um, that said, none of our Deakin international graduates have missed out on an internship um, if they've wanted to do an internship. We've had one person who decided they wanted to do a PhD. We're not going to hold that against them. Um, so, but everyone else has decided, uh, everyone else that's come through our program has um, received an intern place if they've applied for it. So we're hoping to keep that up and we try to support you as much as we can to, to keep that going because um, it's great for us to train fantastic doctors, but we want to make sure you actually get to be doctors at the end of it. So, exactly. Um, I see about my GPA and MCAT. Um, so like I did well, um, in terms of my MCAT, I scored a 509 GPA on a 4.0 scale. I got 3.8. So like I was doing all right. Um, but don't focus on that. And I think that's my biggest thing. And something that I loved about Deacon was like, they like, it's a hurdle you put it in, but at the end of the day, they get to know you, they want to know you. Um, and I, for me, I think that's what really made it stand out too, was that they cared about who you were as a person. Um, these are tests. I understand that they have to be done, but like, I mean, that day, you never know what was going on in that day. And it's one test for your entire future. And I just feel like that's not the best way to approach it. And I feel like Deacons is really good at trying to get to know you and they do seem to interview quite a large breadth of people to kind of get our 15 cohort um so i mean it's competitive every place is obviously competitive but i think if you can bring you like who you are to your interview um that's going to be heaps better than you know i scored a 4.0 and i got a 530 um so don't focus too much on that i know it's really hard um we're all very numbers based and, but just definitely try to pull that back and just like yeah. try to try to be your best version of you when you go into that. So true. And I mean, GPA and MCAT worth 25% of your ranking each and the interviews worth 50%. So we really want to get to know all about you. So we spend 50 minutes um, with all of our candidates. So asking questions about what have you done in the past and what are your passions and you know what type of learning styles do you have? And tell me a time when you like had brilliant success. And although I, I don't actually remember what any of the questions we gave you were free. I think we spent half the time talking about your environmental science degree. Yeah, we um, did that. And I have this picture behind me and everyone just was like, what is this photo? And it was an elephant had painted a, like a picture. Yeah. And so we talked about my love of elephants for like half an hour. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a very productive interview and, it, and we got a fantastic student out of it um, and a great human being, which is fabulous. Um, but I think one of the other things about it is um, we really do want to get to know who you are and that that's really important for us. We, we can teach you all of those things about, you know, the skills you need to be a doctor, um, but we can't teach you how to be a good human being. Um, and really we want our deacon doctors to be good, passionate, compassionate people. Um, and I think to give you an idea of numbers, we have those 15 places and last year we interviewed over 170 people for them. Um, so that like we are really focused on making sure that we get 
the people that are the right fit for our program. So as Bree said, it's not all about the numbers. It's easy to focus on them, um, but it, it, there's more to, more to medicine than just a couple of tests. Um, I think we answered all the questions. <laughs> there's one about class sizes in first versus second oh. year cohort overall. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe one more question. So the class sizes, um, it's 140 students per year or 145 students per year. Um, so that's 130 domestic students and 15 international students. That's pretty consistent. We've had a couple of courses, a uh, couple of cohorts that are maybe 150, so an extra five students, but we try to keep them around that 140, 145 size. Um, and then we break you up into smaller groups as well. So for your pro, um, problem-based learning, you're in a group of eight to 10 people. For team-based learning, you're in a team of five, five people. Um, and then we also have sort of smaller seminars and practical classes as well. So um, you really, we've got pretty good ratios for um, staff to students or tutors to students, just to make sure that we get to know you all and no one falls through the, no one falls through the cracks, which we really don't want to happen. So it's really hard to hide in our cohort when we sort of know everyone on a first name basis so awesome well thank you so much for joining definitely lots of awesome advice and lots of awesome information so thank you so much um, if you do have any more questions for deacon feel free to head back to the career code chat room uh, we got about an hour left of the virtual fair so i hope you enjoy the rest of your time and thank you so much again to brie for for joining and chatting all about your experience no worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us.